we are on our way back to the United Kingdom. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back for another week of reviews. Thank you to all you new subscribers and the ones that have stuck with me all along. I really appreciate it. I'm on my slow crawl to 50k. That would be outstanding. Seeing how my only goal was 500. Talk about rocking it. What we've got today is another British Forces ration for their Army, their Marines, their Air Force, and of course, the British Navy. It's your standard cardboard box. Of course, it's got your MOD stuff on there. Some more info. Some more info for your nutritional stuff. DENS stamp. Your range card on the bottom. And of course, this was sent to me from none other than Foreign MRE. They also sent G. Schultz one of these rations, and it was the same exact menu. I guess we both enjoy what's in this box. Well, you don't want to listen to me ramble on, so let's bust this thing open and see what's inside. Just some simple cello tape. Or scotch tape. Slide that out of here. Oh, my favorite brand. Nutwalker peanuts. I guess that's Luke's uh, strange cousin. We had the brew kit. We'll take a look at that shortly. Black currant fruit grains. This is very reminiscent that I saw in the New Zealand uh, Defense Force rations. Caramel cereal bar. Cookies and cream cereal bar. A lemon beverage powder. And an apple beverage powder. Here we got a Maxi Fuel effervescent tablet. It's black currant flavor. That boiled sweets looks like they are lemon lime or lemon flavored. As for one of our mains, we have pork sausage, beans, and a nice tomato sauce, 300 grams. And this one is chicken and yellow curry, and some white rice. That's 300 grams as well. Package of tissues for bum paper, whatever you need. A mince pie slice. That should be interesting. Packaged by the Bridgeford Company. Tuna, lime, and pepper. That is interesting. Vegetarian tomato noodle. So I'm thinking this might just be some uh, noodles like in a tomato sauce. Then we have the few puree. And if you look on the back with a blue cap, this is apple and cherry. Apple and cherry fruit puree. And then here we've got some Dark chocolate, oat biscuits, another beverage drink. This is tropical flavor. Here we have the hot chocolate drink, and it comes with the sugars and sweeteners. We have some peanut butter. It says smooth peanut butter. Some raspberry jam. What the heck? Looks like all the Tabasco sauce has either not made it into the bottle or has evaporated. Interesting. And then you have the content sheet where you can rate what you thought of each particular item and send this in. And some of these, you can even win an iPad or something to that effect as a prize for submitting. And that is everything in the box. And I've seen a more up-to-date one of these rations. This one has a date of production of 2015. So a lot of things have changed since 2015 to now. But we have a nice bag that you can use just for your trash or water purification or whatever you need it for. It's entirely up to you. The biodegradable spoon or spork, sorry. Four sugars, four creamers. Two different brands of coffee, two teas, three packs of gum, dental gum, six water purification tablets, 
two antibacterial wipes, and lastly, your waterproof matches with the Strike. And now I'll break these down into three meals and we'll make some drinks. And what butter for the morning? We'll have some apple drink or apple juice and some coffee. Our lime vitamin C tablets. And the good thing about these is you don't have to eat them all for breakfast. You save these throughout the day. The black currant fruit grains, and also it has apple puree and elderberry in the black currant fruit grains. Then the cookies and cream cereal bar. Again, this can either be for breakfast or for whenever you want it throughout the day. The dental gum. Two little briquettes. The apple cherry puree. Ooh. And that is 90 grams. And you can see it is very, very fine. And then the pork sausages and baked beans and tomato sauce. Hmm. For me, this would be a good opportunity for our small bottle of Tabasco, but seeing how this is a total fail, that won't be happening. Let's give this a little try. The baked beans, they pretty much taste like your standard pork and beans or that kind of a, a taste for those of us in the States. These sausages, on the other hand, they're almost like Vienna sausages. They have no uh, texture, no bite to them. As soon as it goes in your mouth and you try to kind of chew them, they just kind of all uh, melt away pretty much. I wouldn't even say the, the proper terminology of the word is crumble just kind of just evaporates in your mouth. Let me see if I can get you a semi cross section inside of that. You can see it's really like Vienna sausage like, but overall not that bad. And let's try the apple and cherry fruit puree. Remember this was 90 grams of this. Very silky, very reminiscent of what you would get in a, a Russian IRP with their apple puree. And I say reminiscent because this isn't as silky, hardly, by far, that you would get in an IRP. This is very watery and run down, so it is easier for you to suck it out of that little pouch and get it absorbed into your system faster. Then we have the cookies and cream cereal bar. And it has that rich chocolatey taste. For those of us in the States, we would associate it with Cocoa Krispies or maybe like Count Chocula and I'm sure that would go spot on with your coffee. Yeah, these two would definitely go well together. Nice morning. Then the black currant fruit grains. Now I tried to see where these were actually manufactured. It just said that they were packaged in the UK Revesti Foods, but not exactly where they were produced. And I wouldn't be surprised if these came from New Zealand. And if anybody's ever had like a fruit roll-up or something to that effect, it's very reminiscent, but it's just cut down into little squares. And again, you don't necessarily have to have this for breakfast. It could be for a snack in between breakfast and lunch. Same thing with our lime sweets. And these also provide you your daily recommended allowance and then some of vitamin C. And it has a really mild lime flavor. It's not overpowering. It's not like a sour or ultra sweet. 
just very mild, and you just get that hint of lime in there. And we'll try this apple drink. It definitely has that apple fragrance, which is always nice. Mmm. And it literally tastes like a warm version of apple juice, which goes perfect with breakfast. And then, of course, we would always finish out this meal with our dental gum. And this was a sweet menthol flavor, and of course you get that nice little bit of crispness to the gum. And that is to help clean out your teeth, as well as using your own toothbrush out in the field. Now hydration is very important. However, I don't need all this huge amount, so I'm going to forgo my lemon that I would ordinarily have with lunch. And I'm going to do this effervescent tablet. And this comes with 500, or this goes with 500 ml of water, and then of course my tea. And I don't recall ever doing an effervescent tablet. I know I had one for my first Spanish ration, but I did not know what it was for. And ever since I saw Steve do a review that had effervescent tablets in it, and I, th I, don't, I think it was from Hungary or, or something, I have been so interested in trying one. So hopefully this will be quite tasty. And the other neat thing about this effervescent tablet, it also provides you with some essential vitamins and minerals. And the other nice thing is it only took it about two minutes to dissolve fully. Now aside from the dental gum, and again, we might still have some of our boiled sweets left over, everything else is pretty much going to be a heated main. For a dessert, we'll use this minced pie slice. And it's got like apple, a little bit of orange peel, zest, some other things in there. And of course, it is a Bridgeford packaged item. And just my opinion, I thought it would be nice, kind of warm. And that's what I did. Then we have the vegetarian tomato noodles. Looks like we have some beans in there as well. Boy, that is kind of toasty. Toast, toast. Then we have these red kidney beans in here and it says what is vegetarian ham. It doesn't say what it is though. Hmm. And then along with that, I'm gonna have my tuna that's in lime and pepper. Well, let's dig in and inspect this stuff. The noodles are about an inch long. They're nice and thick. Have a little bit of that red kidney bean in there. Let's give that a go. The tomato sauce is really light. The noodles, of course, they're going to be overdone, so they are a little mushy. Uh, I would say that this vegetarian ham is also, it says there's some egg in there, so it might be part like an egg substitute or something. It is a little chewier than, of course, that sausage, pork sausage we had for breakfast, but just slightly so. Let's combine it with a little bit of this lemon with tuna pepper and see if that brings out any more flavor dimension. It actually kind of does go together. You get this warm kind of creaminess of this, even though it's not really creamy, more like warm pastiness of this because of these noodles. And then a little bit of this coolness and a hint of that lime. It just kind of works together, at least for me. Then we'll take a look at this minced pie. Now I know inside of here it said it had some apple puree and some other stuff. Pretty good. Let's give that a go. Now, besides the dough, in here it says the apple filling contains dried apples, water, raisins, corn syrup, vinegar, starch, apple concentrate, vanilla extract, a little bit of orange peel, and some artificial flavors, hmm. including cinnamon and what they call locust bean gum. Alrighty then. Let's try this raspberry effervescent tablet. You can see that is almost completely clear. Mm, has that bubbly fizzy kind of flavor that's associated with it. And then I made my tea off camera. 
actually more I forgot to hit the record button to be perfectly honest and this was lunch now between lunch and dinner these are probably things that I would snack on of course the peanuts you know simple easy just right out of the packet now the peanut butter and jelly from what I understand the guys in the UK just sucked this right out of the packet too but I had no idea what the jam was supposed to be used with because uh, we didn't have any muesli or anything, so maybe those will get squeezed in together. So you have a breadless PB and J, and then again our cereal bar or caramel cereal bar, and we'll just plate these with dinner. Now I still have four drinks left over. I would assume that I would usually keep something like this and this for Radio Watch or OP if I had that in the middle of the night. But we're definitely going to make this tropical drink, and because I haven't made this in a while, we're going to make this hot chocolate. And I wasn't expecting that. These are more like crystals than a powder. Now, like most European countries, when you get a tropical drink, you try to look on here to determine what kind of juices that they used, and they're very vague. Tropical essentially means any kind of fruit that they can put in and in just in case you're curious this is what you get out of this drink as well as far as nutrition vitamins and minerals and then again if we happen to have any of our boiled sweets left we could always plate those along with everything else that we would use for a snack in between lunch and dinner so again we have some more v6 gum or dental gum and it's just a stew tanner two standard briquettes then we have this uh, caramel cereal bar it's got little bits in there looks like little bits of fruit and it is it's a little bit of like apple puree our PB and J and then again our peanuts and this is honey flavored peanuts And then again, ordinarily, I would have eaten this stuff in between lunch and dinner, depending on what kind of activities that we were doing. If we were road marching, I would definitely need this to help keep my body fueled and efficient. But for dinner, my dessert, I would get these dark chocolate oat biscuits. And these could actually, maybe, potentially, go well with the peanut butter and possibly even the jelly. So we're going to give that a try anyway to see how it goes and for our main I have such high hopes for this because I am such a fan we have the chicken and yellow curry with rice giving it a smell right out of the packet it does have that that nice curry scent I'm just hoping that it is hugely hugely flavored with curry but you know how these rations are they're usually more on the mild side so that they will try to uh, conform to as many palates as possible. And when I saw G. Schultz vid, he put his Tabasco sauce on his curried rice. And I was like, oh! But I know he's giving it a shot. He's trying to spice things up. But what would almost be perfect for this is if they had this crushed red pepper flake. That would just set the heat in the right tone for this. Well, let me give this a little mix. Looks like we have a little bit of uh, potato in there, a little bit of carrot. Again, some more red kidney beans I'm I'm on the hunt for some chicken I don't quite see any of that yet ah oh, here's a little bit maybe you get a maybe you get an ounce of chicken in here let's give you a little look and let's give me a little taste okay okay to be fair that it does have that nice little curry hint to it that good curry flavor when you first, when it first goes in your mouth, it's just bland, and you can sort of kind of taste it, 
but the longer it lingers back there in the back of your tongue, the more pronounced it gets. So actually not that bad. I know most Westerners would probably need to put just a little bit of salt on this, but personally, if I was eating something like this in my kitchen, probably one of the first things that I would do is I put a little tomato on it and maybe even a little cilantro just to wake this up or just like a dash of lime juice. I'll oh, be perfect. This stuff is so good. Yep, I could live off, live off curry, Mexican food. No, hands down. That stuff is pretty tasty. And the second bite you have, the more that curry flavor just starts invading your mouth and getting up into your sinuses. Ah, uh, it's good stuff. Now, let's look at our dark chocolate oat biscuit. Pretty dense. Of course, you can dunk them in your hot chocolate or your tea. They're nice, crisp, and crunchy. You get that little slight hint of chocolate flavor and that nice oat kind of heartiness just starts kind of getting its way around. If you've had oatmeal, you know what I'm talking about. We're a good muesli. These are pretty good. Let's add some peanut butter to them. Just make sure when you always get your peanut butter, make sure that you squeeze it up to get them oils back into there because this side is very liquidy and this side is kind of bound up. So really good knead. And then like I preach, the smaller the hole, the more, more control that you have. You can see it's really smooth. It's actually a little bit runny. We'll give this a try. I actually prefer them plain. We'll do this uh, British Forces style and just take a little bit out of the packet. Now that does provide you with a whole lot of proteins to help get you going and probably some sugars in there as well. But the only problem that I have with it, it gets your mouth all gummy. So it also forces you to take another step, which is a drink from your water bottle. Let's add a little bit of this raspberry jam to this oat biscuit. And I take nothing for granted. I'm going to need this as well. And we'll see how that works together. Yeah, definitely if I was going to put peanut butter on here, I'd have put some jam on there as well. They just offset each other. You get a little bit of that liquidy, yummy goodness that's nice and sweet with that gummy peanut butter along with this crunchiness of the oat biscuit. It all kind of just, that's much better than just having it plain peanut butter, in my opinion. Try a little of our honey peanuts. Looks like they've been uh, almost kind of like deep fried a little bit. It's got a nice little shell on the outside of the actual peanut. Just the slightest of honey flavor, but you do get this nice little crunch by whatever is on the outside of this. It's kind of like a like one of the Filipino cracker nuts. And cleanse our palate with our exotic drink. Mm. That's nice and flavorful. And then again, this one is, well I forgot what kind of bar this is. Let me take a look. That's right, caramel bar with a little bit of apple, apple, apple puree. And this would probably also be a good fit if you wanted to put a little peanut butter on something, just to kind of balance them out. Very light caramel flavor. Uh, you can kind of taste apple puree, but not too much. And then again, if you needed to, you could have some more of your boiled sweets. And let's polish this off of course, with our dental gum. But the last thing that we're going to try is this lovely mug of hot chocolate. This calls for a 300 mil. I don't think I have it that amount in this mug, which will make this extra chocolatey and a little thicker. Ah, uh, yep, good stuff. Now our dental gum. Well, everybody, this was a review of a British 24 hour ration pack or operational ration pack menu number three which was the curry chicken gratefully sent to me by none other than Ford MRE thanks for watching everybody and I will see you all on my next review bye